Hello and welcome to another episode of All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, the mixed media artist behind this channel. And as you can see, um, I am going to be exploring an abstract series of 12. These are just a six by six, roughly. I noticed they're not all exactly the same, but six and a half by six and a half, they're mostly square. And right here, I'm showing you my colors that I'm sort of sticking with. The blues might vary. I might add a manganese or a Payne's gray, but right now, this is nickel azo gold, yellow oxide or ochre, teal, and um, the Titan buff, and black and white. So, a simple palette. And right here, I'm showing you some of the areas that um, I was playing with, exploring with. I'm still not playing as vibrantly or as freely as I would like, but I, I believe that's starting to come as you just you just let go every, you know, uh, a layer at a time. You're letting go one bit at a time. So um, I'm adding, I have added about three or four layers now of first paint, mar uh, first marks, paint, collage, and then uh, in this video, I am going to continue with uh, four, a set of four of the set of 12 each time. And right here, my, I'm explaining to you um, and pointing to how I really love how the nickel azo really brings out the orange and the combination of the yellow ochre with that um, golden, very transparent paint is wonderful. So I'm just going to get these get these paintings ready. Um, I'll show you two sets in this video, and I'm now uh, thinking, well, I need it. Just needs it now. Need is ready for a layer of paint, and. Um, after I do that, um, and I and I, I use paint for every one, every single one, I'll add, uh, this has sort of been systematic, but I I have recently had a change in my in my thinking. And that is going to be in the next upcoming little demonstrations in my Facebook group um, with uh, with this particular series and of course I'm going to continue with many different kinds of series and these colors so uh, stay tuned if you haven't joined the Facebook group please do the link is in the comments part below the video and I think we are one away from 300 members I um, upload a new demonstration every Sunday around 12. Uh, that's Eastern time. Did I say 12 or maybe around one o'clock? It's in the afternoon because I'm so busy uploading other videos for the morning. Um, Sunday is my really wonderful, peaceful day off. So I don't mind doing that um, because this is in real time. This, uh, These video series and my journey as an artist, um, I'm doing... Um, as we go, you're coming along with me as I learn. So I feel, why not share, uh, turn around to the people in line behind you and help someone out, just show and share. That's all I can do um, until I am happy and get to where the other level as to where I want to go. Um, I'll just keep on sharing. So as you can see, I'm just dabbling with different values. And let's see, my thinking behind this. I have them in front of me right now as I'm doing my voiceover. Um, what I find that's been working lately is uh, once I like sort of the composition, which I believe these will turn out most, mostly to be quadrants or simple grids, some might turn into more complicated grids, but I don't want them to, like grids of six or four, six at the most, you know. Um, but 
but I'm not counting or anything like that. So I really like this sage. And I thought, you know what, uh, as I was passing them while they were drying, I really want to put more of that. The, it's the feeling and the calmness of this color that I love. So I'm going to play around with different values, a warmer sage. I'll add more ochre, more white, more teal. And um, I know in the very, in the next layer, I'm going to be playing with um, black and or raw umber and or Payne's gray and white. So the next layers after this for my Facebook group. Um, so you're sort of the video is sort of it's sort of the other way around. This is sort of a special little thing for my Facebook group. And I thought, well, why not show it? Uh, they've already seen this stage. Um, but of course, this video is still very different from the ones I'm showing. They're much shorter. And as you can see, when I've added the white, I'm getting such wonderful, wonderful values. As I was saying before, I got off track. Um, I'm wanting to use similar values, and I'm not working with high contrast for this particular layer, um, at least with the paint. I come in uh, later on with some more collage, but I'm finding similar values, similar colors, and I like to combine uh, the uh, similarities and differences between collage and paint. And you can see my pile on the left. So I've gotten out some neutrals, my black and white circles, uh, the coffee stain papers, handwritten. Oh, there's so much, but I am staying within a certain spectrum. I'm also using an opaque layer here. I've not thinned it out because right now I'm saying in my head, I really like this beautiful sage or turquoise and I'm gonna use it to expand some shapes. I'm not even thinking of shapes right now. Shapes aren't haven't really happened here yet. Uh, on a few of them, some will find themselves faster than others. And what I really like is when I use the paint over collage pieces, there's that really nice texture that happens. It's like a history, it's something's hidden in there. So I'm really liking that. Uh, so if you're enjoying this content, please leave a comment, hit that like button and subscribe because um, pretty soon I'm going to have a lot more time on my hands and I'm really going to get fired up to some really big, big paintings, taking what I've learned from this little journey on to slowly bigger work. Plus, I have to get ready for a, a show this summer. Uh, that's in the works in the studio on different sizes. So anyway, as you can see, the value here is warmer and lighter and I didn't like all the busyness uh, I was just playing with those lines experimenting and sometimes my stencils work and sometimes they get messy and I don't like that so I'm still working on that and I know some of you out there are really experts with your stencils so that's totally awesome uh, I know to you know drier paint thicker paint and sometimes when you use one of those makeup sponges uh, and they've hardened they don't really work so I don't know if you see it in this video or the other one. So I've learned that. So as you can see, this is the next set. I'm, I'm liking sets of four um, rather than individual so I can get some uniformity through my work. And I'm liking that blue there. I want to make it a little bigger. I don't know yet if that's the right value. It's close. And as you can see, I'm playing with different amounts of ochre, teal, and Titan buff, and white. So the white lightens it up and desaturizes the, the, the value, I mean the color, and it lightens it up. So there's a difference there. If I wanted to really make these highly saturated, I would add way more teal, of course, and way more ochre. So... Some areas of these paintings, 
if I'm laying the teal next to another really light value, I'm wanting to make, uh, to put a value that's pretty close to it. Um, so I'm going for less contrast in this layer. I'm thinking of space, breathing room, calmness with this particular color, and covering up anything I don't like. And I really like this. So, um, and I'm finding now, before you sit and begin, of course you have your palette out, you're getting all ready and you're thinking to yourself, okay, what am I doing? What is the purpose of this next layer? Okay. Then you think about it. It's like, okay. Then you stop thinking and then you go. <clears throat> and, you know, you might do it mostly on some. You might, another idea might spark. So what my point is, you don't want to overthink. You have an intention, but you don't want to overthink so much that you're going to miss out on these other opportunities. So it's, it's, it's a delicate balance. And I'm really liking those. I think those are just my fingerprints, my finger, fingers, just doing dots of white. And sometimes I forget. I've been forgetting my drips that I really love. Uh, though I've had difficulties um, making them look good on these small little, little pieces. I'm thinking acrylic ink is better. So you might want to experiment because it's more fluid and you control your drops. And I'm definitely going to use that in one of my next layers. So seeing this now, and let's see if I can dig that up. I have them in front of me. That curvy linear piece of black in the upper right hand corner of this piece that I'm working on now. Now that I've changed the value in the further upper corner of the right of that piece. I'm really liking the differences from the, on one side of the curvilinear black line to the lighter value on the opposite. Now that square, the orange open part with the black, I don't know if that'll stay, it's sort of annoying me still. So I'll end up covering it maybe with all black or change the shape somehow. I don't know, we'll just see what happens. So too many dots, too many circles, so I'm bringing those back, calming it down, creating some negative space. So this is where you want to think negative space, which is the open, the background, breathing room, and the uh, positive space, which is all of your marks, your shapes, etc. So as you can see, I thought, ooh, that really worked. So let's do the same for some other areas of this teal. And I'm really liking that. And another way to describe it when you're going, of course, from a saturated or lighter to dark or dark to light, these are called gradated. You're gradating the, um, the, the area from, from one value to the next and it makes the eye move across the surface, the viewer's eye. So you can even uh, think of direction, um, energy, all of those things. And I still love this piece, and as you can see, I have not covered it up, and I don't think I want to, maybe a little bit. That was that, um, that, paper, that waxy paper that I painted over. It's so funny, I have to give you a little backstory. Every time I finish the video, I remember the name of the paper. While I'm doing my voiceover, you think I could remember the name of that? And I've had this discussion with some uh, subscribers and it's so hilarious. At least, you know, uh, in that way. Uh, it's great to laugh at ourselves. We need to do this. So I'm really liking the, the neutral with that turquoise and that one in the upper right. And it's so cool to be able to see your, see the work uh, uh, a stage away. Um, I don't know if you call it a stage. As a generation, that's what I mean. So uh, on a video, so you can really back away from it as if it's someone else's work. And I'm really liking those marks. So um, sometimes when I do my voiceover, if it's a day or two after, 
because I was deciding to use this video only in Facebook, in the Facebook group or YouTube, but they've already seen this and uh, what I'm gonna do for Sunday is gonna be pretty cool. Uh, a big step for me, we're gonna get really bold. We're gonna be bold with the next layers. Um, I'm thinking black paint. And you know, just anyway, I won't give it away. So I'm loving, still loving, as I've said, I'm slowly running out of this paper, but I still find some pieces around. This is the, let's see, hmm, Manila paper. It's already quite a yellow. I've marked, I've done stream writing on it, as you can see, with graphite, but just marks and lines then I folded it, it's a great big sheet, into like tiny sixteenths. And I think I wrapped it with some string or some tape. And I've just dipped it and let it soak in coffee. Not tea, but coffee. I need to try tea because it's a little lighter. And then after that, then you unfold it and it gets really brittle. And then you lie it flat and let it air dry. Or out in the sun, depends. And uh, it is the coolest. It just really ages it. So now I think you're spraying it with alcohol and some other inks. You could really get some cool effects. So that's that paper right there. And of course, some text. Uh, the older, the better, because uh, it's nice and aged. And I noticed that only a few had the text. I thought, well, I, I should add some more because I because I wanted a neutral so I thought, okay, let's do some collage. Um, so, excuse me, this, um, this next layer is really a combination of collage and paint. And uh, so, not, not to, uh, you know, confuse you, but it just, it just felt good. Like I said, um, there was enough turquoise on there. And as you can see, that little black and white piece, which I have and love, look perfect, overlapping. And now you're pushing layers behind, bringing other layers forward, and you have all of this interplaying going on. It's, uh, I think it's pretty cool. So right now I'm just going over these papers. They're very absorbent and putting on some more um, high gloss medium. This is uh, more handmade collage, and I'm learning uh, the benefits of making some of your own stencils too, and um, because somehow it just it just would look less commercial, um, like circles or organic uh, oval shapes in a grid, and then uh, using uh, various heavier. Um, cardstock or or heavier paper and then you have that you have that stencil to use um, and I think I'm really going to do that there's another artist uh, that of course I'm taking and it's it's fabulous now as you can see yes there you go that worked better this piece and here's why the turquoise value was very similar to the background, and that's what I wanted. So the the contrast was lower than the other piece, plus the open neutral part on that piece of collage carries down that vertical um, uh, swoosh of neutral and moves the eye around. And these are just scraps that I grab. I thought, ooh, I really like that. So taking shapes right to the edge. Um, it's usually a circle, but I'm trying not to do the same thing all the time, you know, but then you do need some repetition throughout the pieces. And now that I covered that, I don't know if I'm going to cover that or leave it. I'm liking the lines, those, uh, let's see. Oh, I do cover it. Ooh, we're going black. I like it. Yes. So that's really working because there's not another big, you can call it a thick line or a long rectangle. There's black 
There's some nice contrast. It's balancing the circles in the lower right-hand corner. And yes, and I probably will do a little bit of black and white beside it. Um, not circles, probably some zigzag lines or something. And uh, we'll, we'll see once that dries. So here comes the handmade paper. I think I had that in my hand. Where did it go? Oh, I must have put it down. So I'm using the other piece of turquoise collage that I didn't put up there. And it's working much better because it's, um, it's, it's, uh, there's more, it's surrounded with more saturated color, even though it's neutral and the darker turquoise. So right now, and, um, so you're just playing and what I'm learning and we're all learning this if you're, you know, if you're just new to mixed media and especially mixed media abstract. This is what I call this. And when I'm doing my journaling, I'm calling my, uh, my abstract work and journals abstract art journaling. Um, I don't think the phrase has been out there too much, but that's what I like to call it. So I'm making many tags with that. So if you put in abstract art journaling, let me know what comes up if... Uh, all My Art and Soul or Michelle Holden is in the top five or six, that's a good thing <laughs> when you're doing your search. So as I, was, as I was saying, so what the goal is after you do a layer at a time and you're doing, I'm making a pass, we call them a pass, a stage of a combination of collage, paint, um, you're, call, you're covering some things up. You're using a particular color. And I find I like to do it. And that's why I've been putting out all these other colors. But I'm, I'm finding I'm only using one or two at a time for a pass. And then I like to replicate that with collage. Or um, keep continuing maybe with black like I did in the upper right hand uh, one. And you're building a richness of layers. So this is the next set. So there, of course, there's 12. So that was three sets of four. I think I, sh I showed you three for this video. If not, don't worry. It's We're just doing the same thing. More of the turquoise uh, or sage. And there's this uh, Parsons paper. Oh, it's a Parsons paper. Anyway, that cooking paper. And I used my jelly plate printer for this. And this is just a piece of scrap with just those two little sort of curvilinear um, marks left on it. And they're like a raw umber. And that's why I like it. And I love how you could see through it. And so then, so it's like a cause and effect. So what might work on one? Then you go, ooh, that worked. So then you pick another piece or you do it in paint, or if a thin layer of paperwork, you might try a thin layer of paint using a medium added to your paint, and you might make it saturated, unsaturated, um, thick, thin. So we're always thinking in differences, or at least that's what I'm trying to uh, make my mindset uh, without thinking. I'm, I'm trying to put it in the back of my mind so it becomes natural. And wow, that takes a long time. I know some of you uh, don't take, uh, ha haven't taken so long with this, but uh, I have. And uh, it took a while to get the, uh, the landscape painting go-to or default out of my out of me, out of my system. And I think I'm getting there now. I love how that's covered. So even to make it a little stronger, I might even, after it dries, brush it with a little white of paint mixed with a little bit of Titan Buff so it's a little uh, neutral. And loving the combination of the ochre collage with the ochre paint 
not bad. And as you can see, that's the fun thing about collage because you can just grab pieces, move them around, and it's like putting this wonderful puzzle together and it's very therapeutic once you learn to just let go and let it guide you. Of course, after you've thought about your intention, okay, that's what these layers are about. Let's do it. So I hope my commentary and I uh, really appreciate uh, some new subscribers. I haven't, uh, I, I don't know your, I don't remember your names, but that was from yesterday, a couple of days ago. You just found my channel. Thank you for um, your wonderful comments. And um, I'm just trying to do the best think alouds, I call them, uh, as I can. And, oh, oh, I found a bubble. So here it is right in front of me. Yes. And it was so annoying me. Now, some, some you know, little bubbles are okay, but I am not having big ones. So I sl while it was still moist or not quite dry, you just slice it and um, the air comes out and then you can put another layer over top and it disappears. It's fantastic. I love this butcher's paper with my black circles and I'm trying not to overuse them even though I really like them. <laughs> that little piece has been driving me nuts. It's, uh, as you can see, I'll grab it, then I'll try it, and it won't, it won't, it won't work, then I'll put it back, then it ended up getting all covered with medium, then I just chucked it out in the garbage at the end. Um, I would love, I would love to hear some, you know, what's been your worst mess uh, during an, during uh, a little session like this. One of mine is, my, of course, I'm not paying attention and my sleeve just gets totally covered uh, in the paint. As you can see, my palette's really close and you can see my arm go really close there. Or if my I put my brush down and it rolls into the paint. Ugh! And then I grab it because I didn't notice it and then I'm all paint. <laughs> So funny. I'd love to hear some of your uh, some of your episodes, or as you can see how close that's my that's my medium brush, and I'll it'll accidentally get into the paint, and then I'll I'll be so into my thing here, then I'll end up putting blue everywhere or something. I know that's happened in a couple of other videos. <laughs> so here we go. Covering up some of those circles. The, I didn't want them taking over this whole piece. And as, as you'll notice too, and you want to keep an eye, uh, I have four because I don't want to get so wrapped up into one single uh, little painting. So as soon as I find it, I'm going to, nope, just put it away, just put it to the side, and then you might even rotate it so you can look at it in a different way. And um, these... The, the stencil girl, this is this is a stencil girl stencil. Uh, the triangles with the dots. And you just go on her site and you go triangles or geometric shapes. That's what was my uh, search. And I love this. So, and I've covered a few, I've covered them a bit with some blue, but they'll mostly stay in there. They might create a cool shape, I'm not sure. So I'm really liking um, the palette. Um, there's a really bright orange up there. I wonder how that got there. Who knows? And just, um, I see, I really like those, that horizontal area there. So I'm thinking, okay, let's use some black, but let's keep it horizontal. Uh, that that would have worked all right. Maybe I would have made it smaller, but I just didn't, I'm not ready to cover it up yet. And I know it needs to be. Just what will go over, who knows? Um, maybe. No. Maybe. Ooh, that is sort of cool. I don't know if I end up using that or not. So, um, as I said, um, I will continue building enough layers to, to create a really rich, rich layers. So then um, the next stage will be a little more thought. 
So it'll be the middle stage. And this stage moves a little slower, but as I said, I want to do a little bit more of a radical layer on some of them because I don't want them all to be all the same. This is an exploration, and I found that I'm not really exploring as freely as I could be. So I want to take a whole, um, you'll see. So um, I'm going to have that up on Sunday in my Facebook group. Uh, so Facebook group members, if you're, if you're watching this video, stay tuned. I know you've seen this already, but I'm going to experiment with different layers next. What if I did this, did something very different? What might happen, especially with a lot of black covering up most of it? You know, I just want to start getting, really pushing myself. So, and you might want to try that too. Um, it's, it's, that's what this little experiment is, this little mini series of 12. So let's use it. So um, what I'll do is on the back of each of these, I will write down in pencil um, what each layer was, how many, like one, two, three, I'll number the layers, just collage, but just so I remember. And I have taken uh, record images of each stage or each pass, so I can do it again. But it's just not, um, just playing safe. So I don't want to play safe, so I wanna, uh, I'm not going to do it for everyone, but I just want to see what would happen. So this is a going to be a really good experiment. So I'm really liking the teal that I've added. And as you can see, unexpectedly, uh, that teal that went around that ochre, now there's a shape forming. So I'm not thinking about, oh, let's do these or let's do this shape. You know, unless that was my intention. And I do really want to. Um, I go on Pinterest. And if you haven't uh, yet... Um, I do have my Pinterest link in here, at least I hope I do, and um, I've got crazy collections of abstract, mixed media, all of my work, favorite works that I follow, and um, I have shapes, patterns, and all sorts of things that I collect for my own ideas, of course, and I use them in my own way. So different shapes that I'm going to start collecting and keeping them in a book. And uh, so I can just have them on hand and I don't need to think so much about these. I want to add them to my intuitive repertoire. So this is a, um, I don't know if this is the, the next, no, this isn't. These are just a new positions. I let those dry and now I'm going to continue adding a much lighter teal because I decided there was too many black lines on this particular piece so it needed to be quieted down and you know things really need to rest and I love how I'm keeping the black and white and now there's another shape forming so that's how I want my shapes to establish themselves I don't want to because if you if you'll never uh what you create unexpectedly is way more better than if you planned and exact formatted shapes. That, that wouldn't work out. Uh, at least that's my opinion. Okay. I'm liking how these are slow. And I like how slow this is. So knowing this, so you might have, you might want to work with a set of 12, then a larger set of four. Uh, a set of three, and my studio right now is filled full of all of these sets. And um, this weekend, I am going to start my first layers on, on most of them. So as you can see, this was pretty light. I don't know. Okay, good. Good, I didn't hide them. I went with the shape. I think now, yeah, it was too much, sat it was too saturated for the background. And I might even go over that with the same neutral just to um, soften the edges. 
I want it to be more atmospheric there. And now shapes are starting to just happen on their own. Those marks on the one that I'm working now, on the upper right hand corner, that's just uh, just with my finger fingertips. And I just wanted a whole bunch of texture. And I'm really liking how it, the, how the difference is between that area and this quiet area. And also the value differences in those turquoise areas. So this is the set now. I'll leave these to dry and we'll continue. So hop on over to my Facebook group and don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.